the hour of toad. I said I would take him in hand as soon as the winter was well over and I'm going to take him in hand today. Toad's hour, of course, cried the mole delightedly. Hooray, I remember now. We'll teach him how to be a sensible toad. This very morning, continued the badger, taking an armchair, as I learnt last night from a trustworthy source, another new and exceptionally powerful motor car will arrive at Toad Hall on approval or return. At this very moment, perhaps, Toad is busy arraying himself in those singularly hideous habil habiliments so dear to him, which transform him from a comparatively good-looking toad into an object which throws any decent-minded animal in the animal that comes across him, cr across him into a violent fit. We must be up and doing ere it's too late. You two animals will accompany me instantly to Toad Hall, and the work of rescue shall be accomplished. Right you are, cried the rat, starting up. We'll rescue the poor unhappy animal. We'll convert him. He'll be the most converted toad that ever was before we've done with him. They set off up the road on their mission of mercy, Badger leading the way. Animals, when in company, walk in a proper and sensible manner, in single file, instead of sprawling across the road and being of no use or support to each other in case of sudden trouble or danger. They reached the carriage drive of Toad Hall to find, as the badger had anticipated, a shiny new motor car of great size, painted a bright red, Toad's favourite colour, standing in front of the house. As they neared the door, it was flung open and Mr Toad, arrayed in goggles, cap, gaiters and enormous overcoat, came swaggering down the steps, drawing on his gauntleted gloves. Hello! Come on, you fellows, he cried cheerfully on catching sight of them. You're just in time to come with me for a jolly, to come for a jolly, for a, for a, a jolly. His hearty accents faltered and fell away as he noticed the stern, unbending look on the countenances of his silent friends and his invitation remained unfinished. The badger strode up the steps. Take him inside, he said, said, said sternly to his companions. Then, as Toad was hustled through the door, struggling and protesting, he turned to the chauffeur in charge of the new motor car. I'm afraid you won't be wanted today, he said. Mr Toad has changed his mind. He will not require the car. Please understand that this is final. You needn't wait. Then he followed the others inside and shut the door. Now then, he said to the toad when the four of them stood together in the hall, first of all, take those ridiculous things off. Shan't, right, replied toad with great spirit. What is the meaning of this gross outrage? I demand an instant explanation. Take them off him then, you two, ordered the badger briefly. They had to lay toad out on the floor, kicking and calling all sorts of names before they could get to work properly. Then the rat sat on him and the mole got his motor clothes off him bit by bit and they stood him up on his legs again. A good deal of his blustering spirit seemed to have evaporated with the removal of his fine panoply. Now that he was merely toad and no longer the terror of the highway, he giggled feebly and looked from one to the other appealingly, seeming quite to understand the situation. You knew it must come to this sooner or later, Toad, the badger explained severely. You've disregarded all the warnings we've given you. You've gone on squandering the money your father left you and you're getting us animals a bad name in the district by your furious driving and your smashes and your rows with the police. Independence is all very well, but we animals never allow our friends to make fool of themselves beyond a certain limit. And that limit you've reached. Now, you're a good fellow in many respects, and I don't want to be too hard on you. I'll make one more effort to bring you to reason. You will come with me into the smoking room, and there you will hear some facts about yourself. And we'll see whether you, whether you come out of that room the same toad that you went in. He took Toad firmly by the arm, led him into the smoking room and closed the door behind them. That's no good, said the rat contemptuously. 
talking to Toad will never cure him. He'll say anything. They made themselves comfortable in armchairs and waited patiently. Through the closed door they could he they could just hear the long continuous drone of the badger's voice rising and falling in waves of oratory. And presently they noticed that the sermon began to be punctuated at in intervals by long drawn snobs evidently pre proceeding from the bosom of Toad, who was a soft-hearted and affectionate fellow very easily converted for the time being to any point to any point of view. After some three quarters of an hour, the door opened and the badger reappeared, solemnly leading by the paw a very limp and dejected toad. His skin hung baggily about him, his legs wobbled and his cheeks were furrowed by the tears so plentifully called forth by the badger's moving discourse. Sit down there, toad, said the badger kindly, pointing to a chair. My friends, he went on, I am pleased to inform you that Toad has, has at last seen the error of his ways. He is truly sorry for his misguided conduct in the past and has undertaken to give up motor cars entirely and forever. I have his solemn promise to that effect. That is very good, mu good news, said the Mole gravely. Very good news indeed, observed the Rat dubiously, if only... If only, he was looking very hard at Toad as he said this, and could not help thinking he perceived something vaguely resembling a twinkle in that animal's still sorrowful eye. There's only one thing more to be done, continued the gratified badger. Toad, I want you solemnly to repeat before your friends here what you fully admitted to me in the smoking room just now. First, you are sorry for what you've done and you see the folly of it all. There was a long, long pause. Toad looked desperately this way and that while the other animals waited in grave silence. At last he spoke. No, he said a little suddenly but stoutly. I'm not sorry and it wasn't folly at all. It was simply glorious. What? cried the badger, greatly scandalised. You backsliding animal, didn't you tell me just now in there? Oh, yes, yes, in there, said Toad impatiently. I'd have said anything in there. You're so eloquent, dear badger, and so moving and so convincing, and put all your points so frightfully well, you can do what you like with me in there, and you know it. But I've been searching my mind since and going over over things in it and I find that I am not a bit sorry or repentant really so it's no earthly good saying I am now is it? Then you don't promise said the badger never to touch a motor car again? Certainly not replied Toad emphatically on the contrary I faithfully promise that the very first motor car I see poop poop off I go in it. Told you so, didn't I, observed the rat to the mole. Very well then, said the badger firmly, rising to his feet. Since you won't yield to persuasion, we'll try what force can do. I feared it would come to this all along. You've often asked us three to come and stay with you, Toad, in this handsome house of yours. Well, now we're going to. When we've converted you to a proper point of view, we may quit, but not before. Take him upstairs, you two, and lock him up in his bedroom while we arrange matters between ourselves. It's for your own good, Toady, you know, said the rat kindly, as Toad, kicking and struggling, was hauled up the stairs by his two faithful friends. Think what fun we shall have together, just as we used to, when you've quite got over this, this painful attack of yours. We'll take Great care of everything for you till you're well, Toad, said the Mole, and we'll see your money isn't wasted as it has been. No more of those regrettable incidents with the police, Toad, said the Rat as they thrust him in, into his bedroom. And no more weeks in hospital being ordered about by female nurses, Toad, added the Mole, turning the key on him. They descended the stair, Toad shouting abuse at them through the keyhole, and the three friends then met in, in conference on the situation. It's going to be a tedious business, said the badger, sighing. I've never seen Toad so determined. However, we will see it out. 
he must never be left an instant un unguarded. We shall have to take it in turns to be with him till the poison has worked itself out of his system.' 